Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order at 6 p.m. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions, the open meeting law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 18, and Governor Healy's March 29, 2023 revised order extending remote participation by all members in any meeting of a public body. This meeting of the select board will be conducted both in person and via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and our parties with a right and a requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website. For this meeting, members of the public and committee members may attend the meeting in person or for those who wish to do so remotely. For those who are not in person, every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Pursuant to MGL 7C 38, Section 20F, after notifying the chair of the public body, any person may make a video or audio recording of an open session of a meeting of a public body and may transmit the meeting through any meeting. Beginning of the meeting, the chair shall inform other attendees of any such recording. The meeting is being recorded by the Berkshire Edge, the Berkshire Eagle, the Town of Great Barrington, and CTSB. Any member of the public wishing to speak at the meeting must receive the permission of the chair. The lifting of agenda items of those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed in the meeting. Not all items listed may, in fact, be discussed, and other items not listed may be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. So we will start off uh, to convene as sewer commissioners. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Joe, do you want anything to say on that? Yes, I just saw the procedure of questions. The, yes. is, um, the ones that are approved, the ones that are approved, the ones that have it. He's made the recommendation. Through these right now. We never go through them. He's made the recommendation to which ones we should approve. And if we have questions or want to change those recommendations, we can. But we usually don't go through each one. Okay. So we're, we're, we're approving. Oh. The motion will be to approve the ones that he's okay. uh, Joe has recommended. No problem. Anyone else? I make a motion to approve the sewer abatements recommended by staff as noted in the packet. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Uh, motion to go back into a session as select board. So moved. We have a second. second. All in favor? Okay. Now we're in the select board regular meeting. Approval of minutes of November 20th, 2023. I uh, make a motion that we approve the minutes of November 20th, 2023. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Select board's announcement statements. Dan? Garfield? No. Eric? Um, we have a uh, farmer's market this weekend at the Fuzzy Dome on the days are upon us. I'm hoping everybody um, gets to enjoy some time with their family and their loved ones. A uh, couple things. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Betsy Andrews and the Southern Berkshire Chamber of Commerce um, and many, many volunteers fire department. I mean, there's just too many to uh, to thank, but the holiday stroll this weekend was such a success and so fun, and it was just a celebration of the community, so I, I want to really, um, you know, send my thank you to everyone that was involved. It was a really, really fun night. Uh, the second um, point I'd like to bring up is, uh, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I wanted to bring up the GE transport plan again. Uh, I am very happy to see that there is a letter on its way from the tri uh, from the rest of the river towns um, recommending uh, rail transportation as the, the mode of transportation. Uh, I do need to emphasize that we have public comment until February 1st, and it's really important that we um, submit our comments and recommend uh, railway as the, the mode of transportation. Um, I had, as I said before, not to go into depth, um, I went to the, the Lee 
high school presentation that GE presented their, their presentation for the plan. And um, really as a community, we have to protect the health and ensure the safety of this community. And the way that we can do that is to submit our comments to the EPA and say that we will not stand for um, transportation through our roads um, with GE's toxic materials. And it's, it's really important that we all get together and unite um, with submitting these comments. So again, the comments um, can be submitted until February 1st. And then at that point, the EPA will take a look at all the comments and they'll either uh, request changes. Um, they might have a ask for a total submittal from GE, um, or they might approve it with conditions. But anyone that's seen their presentation has seen that they haven't really discussed railway as a viable option. And we really don't want this toxic material going through our road. So um, the comments can be sent to r one usatonic at epa.gov. And I just would like to make a request that like, um, the town of Lee, they've put on their homepage uh, information about the transportation plans. I'm just wondering if we could do that as well, uh, meaning the town of Great Barrington, so that people get to see where the you know the transportation is. Um, the fact that it's coming down Front Street, and we're talking you know, possibly three years with up to 59 trucks going through um, Lusitonic. So if we can maybe um, possibly put that on our homepage so that people can see the actual transportation plan and um, know where they can submit comments. That would be really great. So thank you. Thank you. I have a statement from the select board concerning the Zatonic Water. As many of you are aware, this board has been meeting in executive session over the past several months to discuss the various options available to the town for addressing the issues with water quality and water pressure in the village of Lusitonic. The Lusitonic Water Works Company is privately owned and regulated by wealthy Mass DEP and Mass DEP. Since 2019, the board has discussed this topic a number of times. We've held public input sessions. We've explored a merger of the town's two water systems with the Great Barrier Declare District. We hired engineers and consultants to study the company's water system and the capital improvements necessary to address the quality and pressure issues. We also hired an appraiser capable of determining the fair market value of the company. The reports prepared were presented publicly and remain posted on our website in the HWW information plan. After a recent meeting of the board and executive session, we have instructed our town manager to conduct what we believe will be the final study in this process. We now have a good sense of that relate to the town purchase. We have a good idea what the building is as a result of our prior work. What we need to determine now are the costs that would be associated with the acquisition and operation of a water service utility and what those costs would translate to in taxpayer dollars. An acquisition and operation study will explore the revenues, expenses, capital needs, and anticipated user fees of a town owned water system operated on an enterprise fund basis. For anyone unfamiliar with the concept of an enterprise fund, it's a department funded by the users of the service provider. Our wastewater treatment plant is a great example of this. This study could take some months to complete, but it is critical that we have this information available before proceeding to negotiate a purchase. This board and the taxpayers and water customers need to be fully informed of the cost before the question is presented to voters for consideration. We ask for your patience during this time, and we remain committed to solving this problem for our residents and for the town. Thank you. Tom, I'm going to just report. One update to include uh, with your South Water Works agency is that we have received 65 applications for relief funding as a kit. Thank you. Licenses, licenses and permits, the annual select board license renewals. So this is going to take some time. Just bear with us. Lee, you want to start? And I, so the first one, I'm going to recuse myself from Common Victor Alert because I work at Fairview Hospital. Instead of separating them out, let's just do this quicker. Okay. Okay, so we do have three, so we can continue with this. Okay. So I'll start with the Common uh, Vic License, please. And I move that we approve the following. 
uh, just saying the names. Uh, you, you need to read the each motion. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got it right there. So you need to read that first. Uh, I make a motion to approve the Fundman Victualler annual license as presented in the pocket with the condition that any slash all required documents be submitted to the select board town manager's office before the license is granted. Um, let's go through the list. Yes, please. Uh, one Shree Three LLC, Bogey's Restaurant, Agave's Mexican Grill, Cafe Adam, Taqueria Azteca, Manhattan Pizza Company, Berkshire Food Co-op, Fairview Hospital, Barrington Brewery, Number Ten, Big Wild World, Big Y World Class Market Number Twenty Two, Brazilians Fine Food, Cove Bowling and Entertainment, Christie Farm Catering Incorporated, Cumberland Farms Six 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 Eight, South Main Extra Mart, Baba Louie's Organic Sourdough, Extra Special Teas on Elm Street, Extra Special Teas on Pleasant Street, Farm Country Soup. Fiddleheads Grill, Fiesta Bar and Grill, Fuel, Great Wall, Four Brothers Pizza, Gorman Norton, Granville House, Carly's Angels, Marketplace Specialty Food Shop, Pizza House, The Elm Railroad Street, Widow's Fresh Marketplace, Great Barrington Seneco, Pleasant and Main, IE Inc. on 38 or 3080 State Road, IE Inc. on 38. 30A 8 State Road, Izen Gourmet Japanese, James A. Madala Post 8348 VFW, Hoi Chinese Restaurant, Asian Breeze, the, the Great Bagel, uh, the Great Barrington Bagel Company, thank you, Lipton Mart 606, Aroma Bar and Grill, Margarine Rouge, Rouge McDonald's, 2809, GB Eats, Mama Lowe's Southern Style Barbecue, Moon Cloud, Najis, Patisserie Lennox, Rio, Price Chopper 155, Rubiner's Cafe, A&B Package and Variety, Marketplace Kitchen Table, Shiro, Soko Creamery, Dunkin' Donuts, Steam Noodle Cafe LLC, Fairfield Inn and Suites, Domaine's Liquors and Fine Foods, Taft Farms, Siam Square Fine Thai Chinese, The Bistro Box, The East Asian Restaurant, The Well, Thornwood Inn, Miller's Pub, Triplex Cinema, Cabaldi's Pizzeria, Braywell, Wayantana Country Club, Chico uh, Tal Mexican Restaurant, The Haley Performing Arts Center. Second. Oh, all in favor? Aye. And nays, okay. Um, so now I'm moving on to, I make a motion. Uh, actually, I'm gonna, I have to- You were choosing something this one. So I make a motion to approve the weekday entertainment annual licenses as presented in the packet with a condition that any all required documents be submitted to the select board town manager's office before the license is, is granted. Bogey's Restaurant, Berkshire Food Co-op, Number 10, Chrissy Farm Catering, Inc., Fiesta Bar and Grill, James A. Medola, Post 8348 BFW, Inc., Thornwood Inn, Triplex Cinema, Wyatna Country Club, Chico Cantel Mexican Restaurant, Bard College at Simons Rock, Berkshire South Regional Community Center, Guthrie Center, Mahewi Performing Arts Center, St. James Place, and Unitarian Universalist. Thank you. Second. So I have two recusals. All in favor? Aye. Um, it's unanimous. I have to recuse myself from the Sunday entertainment. Okay. okay. A motion to approve the Sunday entertainment annual license is presented in the packet with the condition that any or all required documents be submitted to the Slack Board Town Manager's Office before the license is granted. Bogey's Restaurant, Fiesta Bar and Grill, James A. Medola, Post 8348 BFW, Thornwood Inn, Triplex Cinema, Bar College at Sunday's Rocks, Berkshire South Regional Community Center, Guthrie Center, the Haley Performing Arts Center, St. James Place. Second. All in favor? 
I make a motion to approve the category of in holders annual licenses as presented in the packet with the condition that any slash all required documents be submitted to the select board town manager's office before the license is granted. Thornwood Inn, the Lantern House Motel, Wind in the Pines, Briarcliff Motel, Monument Mountain Motel, Travel Lodge, East Rock Inn, Quality Inn, the Barrington, Holiday Inn Express, Fairfield Inn and Suites, Grand Villa House, Wainwright Inn. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. I make, a few I make a motion to approve the category of amusement device annual licenses as presented in the packet with the condition that any slash all required documents be submitted to the select board town manager's office before the license is granted. Bogey's Restaurant, Triplex Cinema, and the Haley Performing Arts. No, no, no. Oh. Then you jumped. No. There's only one. Oh, okay. Bogey's Restaurant. Second. Ah. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I make a motion to approve the category of motion picture annual licenses as presented in the packet with the condition that any slash all required documents be submitted to the select board, town manager's office before the license is granted. Triplex Cinema and Hayway Performing Arts Center, Incorporated. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. At one refusal. Okay. I make a motion to approve the category of bowling annual licenses as presented in the packet with the condition that any all required documents be submitted to the select board town manager's office before the license is granted. Hope bowling and entertainment. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. I make a motion to approve the category of class two auto annual licenses as presented in the packet with the condition that any slash all required documents be submitted to the select board town manager town manager's office before the license is granted. Seven and 23 motor sales, Cornell Auto Salvage, DA Dempsey Auto Sales, Decker's Auto Body Incorporated and Mechanic, JD Automotive, Larkin Limited Enterprises LLC, Johnny's Garage, John's Auto Body, TireKickers.com LLC. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. I make a motion to approve the category of Class 3 Auto annual licenses as presented in the packet with the condition that any slash all required documents be submitted to the select board town manager's office before the license is granted. Formel Auto Salvage, Decker's Auto Body Incorporated Mechanic, John's Auto Body. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. I make a motion to approve the category of restaurant all alcoholic annual licenses as presented in the packet with the condition that any slash all required documents be submitted to the select board town manager's office before the license is granted. Agent Breeze, Agave's Mexican Grill, Aroma Bar and Grill, Baba Louie's Organic Sourdough, Izen Corp uh, Gourmet Japanese, Bogey's Restaurant, Cafe Adam, Cove Bowling and Entertainment, Chrissy Farm Catering Incorporated, Little Heads Grill, Fiesta Bar and Grill, Four Brothers Pizza, GB Eats, IE Incorporated 380 State Road, IE Incorporated 380A State Road, Koi Chinese Restaurant, Manhattan Pizza Company, Marketplace Kitchen Table, Miller's Pub, Moon Cloud, Number 10, Prairie Well, Rubiner's Cafe, The East Asian Restaurant, The Elm Railroad Street, the Well, Thornwood Inn, Triplex Cinema, Chico Tiles Mexican Restaurant, Steam Noodle Cafe LLC. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous with four. I make a motion to approve the category of restaurant wine and malt annual licenses as presented in the packet, with the condition that any slash all required documents be submitted to the select board town manager's office before the license is granted. Pizza House, Barrington Brewery and Restaurant, Brazilians. Fine Food, the Hayway Performing Arts Center Incorporated, Najis. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. I make a motion to approve the category of in holders annual licenses as presented in the packet, with the condition that any uh, required documents be submitted to select board slash town manager's office before the license is granted. The Barrington. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. I make a motion to approve the category of Veterans Club 
annual licenses as presented in the packet, with the condition that any all required documents be submitted to the select board town manager's office before the license is granted. James A. Modelo, Post 8348 FW. Second. Discussion? I just know the asperts. The asperts and all say on the top that they're, they're not, all the documents have not been submitted. So until they're submitted, the licenses won't be granted for our motion. You're welcome. Any other? All in favor? Aye. Any others? I make a motion to approve the category of retail package all alcoholic annual licenses as presented in the packet with the addition that any all required documents be submitted to select board town manager's office before the license is granted. Thank you. Do you want to refuse yourself on this one? Sure. Thank you. And the package and variety, um, big Y world-class market, number 22 table and vine, Domainies liquors and fine foods, Gorn Norton, Rito's fresh marketplace, Plaza package, Prada's fine wine and spirits. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Four in favor, one recused. I make a motion to approve the category of retail package wine and malt annual licenses as presented in the packet with the condition that any all required documents be submitted to select board town manager's office for the license is granted. Berkshire Food Solar, Depart Wines, Marketplace Specialty Food Shop, Gouverneur's Cheese. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Everyone's always excited to tune into this meeting. <laughs> okay. Public hearings. Guido's Quality Fruit and Produce Inc. Application for multiple amendments to the liquor license. Change of officers, directors, LLC managers. Change of stock interest, change of corporate name or DBA, change of pledge of license, stock or inventory, change of manager, operation of Brex, 760 South Main Street, or Burn to Mass. Don't go to the public hearing. Roll call vote. Roll call vote. Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Would you like to introduce yourself and explain this application? Sure. Uh, my name is Nick Johnny. You are from Captain Julian Myers. And here on behalf of the applicant. So here with me is Chris Marcero and Marcero and Matt Um, The first, uh, I'll just kind of break this into two categories. We've just had the existing liquor license was removed for next year because these things may not make it through the ABC season. Uh, so there's two categories. One is um, an alteration of the license premises. Um, I think as most people know, then uh, the has just gone through a substantial renovation in the last four years. And, Resulting in a change in the premises. Uh, so we're asking for that alteration approval. It's on page 10 of the packet, and then I can go into the second category and then just transfer the business. And I think it's been out. Um, and there's going to be a transfer of uh, widows. Um, Quality fruit and produce inks and related companies from um, uh, Press and Matt uh, to give your children. And I can actually like that, then we need to amend the liquor license to reflect the various changes. Uh, so there will be the change of the stock ownership. It's going to go to the kids. Uh, and then um, there's going to be the transfer of, of the redemption. So that there's going to be a pledge of the, um, of the stock interest to. Um, and Chris uh, from the company, so we need that. And then a change of the office and directors, a change of the license manager. And then we're uh, adding uh, a DBA for um, Guido's Fresh Marketplace because it's really the name of the company, but it's the uh, company when we see this place we may be filed with the uh, town for a DBA. So, so um, if I may, I was going to start with the alteration of the premises. That's right. Um, so um, you have in your packets the plan um, that shows um, the different So um, the different premises um, um, are at the same time. And uh, it's been a substantial amount And the um, foundation has increased the size of the building by approximately 22,456 feet 
with it um, in interior finishes and equipment and fixtures. It's great. Um, the, the location um, of the um, license premises has changed, but the display area itself um, has um, increased from approximately 360 square feet to 969 square feet. We've got two different areas. We've got one uh, which um, uh, which is uh, shown on the plan. Um, it shows the display area. So this is what you have in the back. Um, and then we have a floor plan that shows the entire first floor of the store. It shows the display area in the center. And then in this corner, then there's also a locked storage area. So the change that we're going to have is an increase of the interior um, display area um, in the center of the, of the, of the market. And that's going to go from 360 to approximately 969. Um, and then we'll have a change from um, there used to be a cage lock area um, in, in the old location that, that showed that had the, um, the inventory that was in there. And now that's been relocated to a locked storage area that's in that corner. The percentage of the space that is um, as it was used in the past for um, ethical sales and um, storage was 2.4% of the market. After the renovations with the increase in the store size, then actually this, this is, it's funny that it comes to that, but it's, another, it's still 2.4% of the market. So obviously um, the majority of the, the market is, is um, used for uh, other purposes. Um, and of course the other purposes is for um, private buildings. Um, market is primarily used for Products that include produce, meat, seafood, daily items, baked goods, general grocery merchandise, flowers, gifts, cookware, and kitchen items. I'll say this is a relatively small amount of simply the business. Uh, with that, is there, are there any questions about the proposed location and size of the So I guess just to recap on a few things, it, it it all stays pretty much contained in there. There's no other displays staggered throughout the store, correct? Correct. In that central area with the storage in the corner. Yeah. But I don't see any other questions. So let's ask. Um, do you want to go over all the changes? Yeah. Why don't you go over all? Yeah. And then we'll get. Yeah. Okay. All right, so um, as I said before, then there's going to be a change in the stock ownership. So the company, which is now owned by one Chris, they're going to be owned by um, the three children. So that's going to be Luke Massero, Nick Massero, and Anna Massero. Um, so um, the, the transaction, not that it really matters, but the transaction is going to be partially a gift, and that partially will be a redemption by the company. So at the end of the transaction, then the three kids will own 100% of the company. And um, they're going to be out of the top. So that first um, amendment is going to be the change of the stock ownership to the company. In connection with that, um, as I mentioned, there, there's going to be a pledge to stock that's going to be held by the chief after the transaction. And that the pledge of the stock is going to be um, serving as collateral for the amount of the purchase price that will be used on the company to the company. So that second amendment is for the third amendment is going to be the change of office in the director's now. So now all three of um Luke, Nick, and Anna are going to be um, the director, the directors of the company. Uh, and then also um Luke will be serving as president, Nick will be serving as president, and Anna will be serving as secretary of the company. So that's the three of the team officers of uh, there'll be a change of the license manager. Chris is currently the manager for the uh, the license. And after the transfer, which then uh, Luke will be stepping in as manager of that. Um, it's been um, for 11 years since um, 2005. Um, it's been actively involved in the company. He's uh, part of the management team and um, is the manager of this particular. 
Uh, and then the last amendment is the addition of the business at the license stage. Windows Quality Improvement Produce Inc., which is the company name, EPA, Windows Threshold. Okay. You have any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the changes between the layout and the layer, those are operating. Correct. Right. Um, no, sorry, I know we, um, we, we, we had actually had an application that had come in earlier in the year, and then it never quite made it here. Um, so um, we since, you know, um, Back to work room, and then we would like to get this back on so we can um, then expand that out. Okay. Um, public comments to speak in favor or opposition. I see no one. Question, any other question from the select board? No. Uh, we have no comments from other boards. Motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Roll call vote, Ben. Garfield. Aye. Eric. Aye. Lee. Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Any discussion Aye. among the select board? I just, um, just like to say that I, I view uh, Guido's, I, I don't go there often, but I see it as a great um, Berkshire County and great community success story. And, um, Pretty exciting to see the growth that they've had, and uh, it's exciting to see that it's getting passed down to the family. And um, so, I just I, I hope the family the same success that you've had. And um, I remember going into the store when I was a young kid, going to Pittsfield to see my grandma with a small store. So, it's pretty amazing to see how you guys have grown since then. And, um, exciting to see that it's staying in the family. I agree. Yeah, I was just going to say thanks to the kids for stepping up and thank you for, you know, shepherding this and being such a beacon in our community. It's, you know, you're just, um, it's such a celebration to have you in Great Barrington. So I know you're also somewhere else, but <laughs> I like to claim you. But uh, thank you so much for all the all the work you've done and all the joy that you've brought Great Barrington and, and Berkshire County. So It's one of the iconic businesses in Great Barrington and Berkshire County. So thank you. I go with the thing they just said, and then say former Guido's employee. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So the, those kids are ready. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve um, Guido's Quality Fruit and Produce Incorporated application for the following uh, amendments to the liquor license. Uh, the change of op officers slash directors, LLC managers. Number two, change of stock interest. Number three, change of corporate name or DBA. Number four, change of pledge of license. Number five, stock or inventory. Number six, change of manager. Number seven, alteration of premises at 760 South Main Street, Great Barrington, Mass 01230. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, Ben Garfield. Eric, Aye. Lee, Aye. and I, it's unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a number of board openings if you want to move to Great Barrington. <laughs> Next, we have continued from November 20th, 2023, the special permit application for Michael, Michelle Maki. Thank you very much. DBA Midori's Garden LLC. 920 Main Street, Great Barrington, for marijuana cultivation and manufacturing establishment in an industrial zone at 920 Main Street. The application is filed in accordance with Section 3.1.4C, 13, 7.18, and 10.4 of the zoning bylaw. So, motion is we already, we've not settled the public hearing. The public hearing is open and go right ahead. All right. So, um, so yeah, so we really met. So for the first time on September 11th, then we decided to hire an older consultant. But unfortunately, it's been three months now, and there still been no older consultant found. Um, furthermore, there's been no like, indication of when the ones we have found will be available or interested in taking the work um, or how.
how they would even go about it. So it's regarding the cultivation, it's unclear how to even move forward. So I want to reflect to the about that the cultivation is the best of the application only. Um so we can go ahead and move forward with the manufacturing. Okay, so what we do then is I would take a motion to um, accept the withdrawal of the cultivation without prejudice. Uh, I'd make a motion to accept the withdrawal um, without prejudice. So the cultivation. The cultivation. Have a second. Second. Any discussion? Let's do a roll call. Ben, Garfield, Eric. Aye. Lee. Aye. And I. Now we will um, make a motion to continue the hearing uh, either to January 8th or the 22nd. Which would you prefer, the sooner the better? Yeah. Okay. So to continue the hearing to January 8th. Um, that way we'll have time to draft the findings of fact and we'll be able to finish it hopefully that evening. So do I have that motion? I make a motion to continue the hearing until January 8th. A second. Any discussion? All yes, in. At 6 o'clock at, at the time. At 6 p.m. at the time. Okay. And no discussion. Ben, Garfield, Eric, I, Lee, I. and I. Thank you very much. Okay, new business. Ramsdale Library Community Preservation Act application request for select board support. Come on up here. And whoever else is here for the library trustees. I'm going to um, recuse myself from that since I sit on the committee that's going to be making this final decision. Well, I guess sit down. Go right ahead, Ruby. Oh, okay, because I have it. Mm -hmm. um, I have submitted a very important application in this community because it gives a pretty nice idea of what we're trying to do. It has compliance as well as um, uh, endorsement by the community people um, for this project. So what I'd like to do is get enforcement from the select board um, to support our project. Um, do we have questions? Because what this was, what you would ask me was a request for the CPA ap application. Um, that is correct. Um, it in the sense that um, we would like to have, but more broadly, we would like to have the endorsement of the whole time. Questions. I don't. I don't know that I necessarily have um, full scope of questions. I have statements. Yeah, that's my time. Yeah. Look, do we for next time? No. When 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 that's it's time. time. It's time. Okay. It's time. So, um, I do um, like uh, the strategic plan that you have here, and I personally look at this project that you guys have put for. Yeah. For us um, is not only a renovation of a historic building in Housatonic, but it's um, creating a, a, like a cultural center as well. And and I think um, this is a, a, a direction that we need to move in and should move in um, for the possibilities of that additional funding um, that comes into play. So. Um, the way I understand this works is um, the CPC can approve this and it can be in holding. And then if, if this grant moves forward, great. If it doesn't, money isn't lost. No, it goes back to see, unless the, the proviso is unless they spend it in order to try to get the grant. Mm -hmm. And then the grant isn't received, then the money would be lost. And but I guess my understanding is it's a placeholder for to show that you have the funds that the, this grant requires, right? That's it's a requirement right. for the application. 
this fund is to represent that the community has endorsement for this project. Mm -hmm. And so what, where does that money go? It actually sits in the bank until October when we will get a final um, decision on whether we are going to get this grant or not. Mm -hmm. But having said that, even if we don't get the grant for whatever reason, there is still a possibility that the MBLC will understand how much we need the funding and how critical it is for us to get this money at this time for the preservation of the historical site as well as up, you know, um, uplifting the library of functions that they can actually find money to provide for us at another time mm -hmm. that is outside of the grant cycle. Okay. So moving forward, we can go wrong. But if you don't move forward, I think the town has been preparing for this for many years now, from 2017, we're doing the uh, facilities vision. And then 2020 was the building program. We had an archaeological survey that was done in 2019. And way back to the master plan, 2013 has specifically discussed this. So the town has been moving forward. And this is our opportunity to really do something about it before the construction cost gets astronomical. And then we finally have to say, well, maybe it really isn't worth our money to do this. And that I don't think anyone wants to have happen. Does that make sense? It makes complete sense. And and I um I agree with uh, the route that you guys are, are taking as far as the request that's being made before us tonight and, and as far as asking for the funding. I do say I personally look at this building as not only a library, but a, a cultural center, uh, a meeting center. And and just, I mean, it, I was just in there the um, Sunday and, and it's, it's basically a museum sitting there. And as a child going through the building quite a bit, my, my, my brothers used to clean it at night and uh, the second floor completely underutilized in such a grand space that I, I just think that it's the possibilities of pushing this forward and getting 60% of the funding, just, it, it just, we should, we just need to endorse this and move this forward and see what happens. And then just make the note that if, if it doesn't go, the money hasn't been spent. It's in holding, and and then we can decide from there well, where, where to go. Where the that, CB, CBC would get that money back, and they would decide how to spend it. Right. Yes. Right. You're so, right. So with that, that I, I don't see how we can go wrong. I, I do understand the fact that the CPC has many things to view, but this being a town building, one of the last ones that we have in in our our little hamlet of who's um it's just it's just starting to 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 make a big move like this i feel personally so as a select board member i feel that the board should should uh you know endorse this plan anyone else do i have a motion I make a motion for the select board to approve um, the endorsement of this plan to the CPC. In a second. Okay. Discussion. Good. Yes. I mean, I agree with what you're saying as well. The vision we have for this building and the value we have is for um, yep. All in favor? Uh, Unanimous. Thank you, Ruby. Okay. We have the joint letter for the rest of River Towns. So that's not quite ready. So we will put that off to the next meeting. And then we've added the request to subordinate a real property lien from the community development block grant fiscal year 
2014 Housing Rehabilitation Program. Mark, the road has an that one. Uh, pretty straightforward. The executive summary of the request looking for the board to vote tonight to support the lien does not mean that the uh, that the loan is uh, goes unpaid. It means that we're not the primary lien. This would allow the homeowner to proceed to uh, other necessary homeowners. So I can just repeat that last bit. The, uh, in this particular case, uh, assuming you vote to support the lien tonight, this will, will allow the property owner at 390 Maple Avenue and Sheffield to complete uh, necessary repairs. It does not mean that the uh, remaining balance of the loan is forgiven. It just means that we are no longer the primary lien. Any questions? Unless we subordinate our our departments to this, they can't proceed with their own equity loan. So they they would like to. My understanding is they would like to continue to complete necessary repairs, but they need us to vote to subordinate this loan tonight. So at the end of the day, if I understand this correctly, they're going to get a home equity loan. That would be the first, say, lien on their house. That gets paid back first. In theory, when if something was to go wrong, then the town would be second as yeah. far as if you're something you're went catastrophic. giving up your primary lien. Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Okay. Do I have a motion? I make a motion that the select board approve to subordinate the lien and authorize the town manager to sign the subordination document. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Citizen speak time. Go right ahead, Claudia. Right ahead. Claudia Shapiro, submitting a monthly grant to the record. I'm adding to my concerns voice of the December 7th joint board of selectmen proposed meeting regarding chapter 48, section 9 special comments. It also has a space combustion facility by running the recharge area, surface picking of water supplies, zone industrial, but not prohibited in the zone of my law. That my 78 a month plain road property is in the recharge area and the state and federal compliance would include but not limited to. The 2010 provision is added to the codified bylaw while employed the extra overlay district section for hazardous waste. Unfortunately, this enables the skirting of the hazardous waste difficult public permit process. Currently, there are no hazardous waste combustion facilities this side of Massachusetts due to the dismantling of Pittsfield's Kobanda and Ibalot's bonding facility last year. The concern in this facility will include the 32 Western. Massachusetts cities and towns and include not just hazardous, but also acute and medical waste. Such a facility resides when there's a board of health cited and I concern. Was this accomplished with Dr. Magellani was board of health chairman and Mr. Brahinsky health agent? Or would it be accomplished by the current board of health? This is how it caused a great parent and regional airport permitted in April and not just behind my back, but to stay in itself in a town of great parent and with monetary compensation, grants and incentives. I've had a record before us for the board the airport is to file with the town manager six months after the April permitting. I'm told nothing received yet. On November 22, I sent the request to receive Mr. Brudinski and Mr. Rembo for responding. Planning board slash town manager slash select board office has no documents in response to this request. The airport has intentionally shut itself down since receiving the April permits in preparation for the 25th attorney passed out. Ann Fredericks and Holly Hamer's land for uh, land court lawsuit won't be permitting the airport under the guise of an enforcement action and their last request in their prayer for relief. As a matter of law, the airport's expansion, extension, and enlargement requires further municipal approval. This approval is to be accomplished at the upcoming 2024 20, annual town meeting in conjunction with the town airport acquisition. The airport's Chapter 61A status giving the town a great barrel to the person of refusal. 
All parties involved in the Lucian Airport cannot legally, it does not operate within the current time compliance of the airport. The airport property is 52.7 acres. 90 if they own and control the field off Seacock Crossroads. This field municipal airport is 550 acres. Smallest airport in the state of Massachusetts is 450 acres. The plaintiff's attorney, Mr. Mueller, specializes in transportation, infrastructure, construction, airport terminals, permitting, municipal waste facilities, and then a domain. Land use and permitting and land court. Let me just wrap it up. That's okay. three minutes. That's fine. Thank you, Claudia. We appreciate it. Yeah, Matt, one more on my time. Matthew O'Brien, go right ahead. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, I just wanted to, this is Matthew O'Brien. I'm domiciled at 33 Van Dusenville Road. Um, I just wanted to bring up again um, with the problem with our water situation in Housatonic and also things like the PCB removal and all of that. Um, I have been traveling uh, much of Massachusetts. I was elected as the chairman of the Massachusetts Assembly, the de jure uh, assembly, the unincorporated. And so I've had a chance to visit with a lot of people in our state and also select board members of different towns, which I'm very close friends now with a little bit larger town than ours, a beautiful town where the uh, chairman and I have been discussing how things work and what we could better. I'm giving him solutions already with uh, how the law of the land the land jurisdiction can actually fund some of the things that we're having problems with, getting the people that are involved that live in these areas together so that we can start to see how they're affected and what other means we can get done. Sometimes the people that actually live there have some great ideas. We just never, you know, really talk to them. You know, I even heard that, uh, you know, the water company, Jim and his father, that you guys haven't sat down together to just discuss it. You know, it's done with lawyers in this commercial jurisdiction that's always about money. And it's not about, you know, that comes first. And then we're talking about the problem, you know, and I've tried with Ed Abrams before. This is going on three years of trying to speak with anybody over at the town, which is, seems to be impossible. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that other towns now are I'm speaking to and I'm starting to think about maybe I want to move to one of those towns at this point. So, um, you know, I, I still would like to appeal to the board. If anybody there would like to speak with me, I have approached almost everybody, you know, and uh, without any answer. But uh, I'm here, you know, if you want to know my the police chief, I became very close with. And he understands the jurisdictions quite well. We get along well, we understand it. I tried to have a meeting with him. The Registrar of Deeds also wanted to come and some others just to have a meeting around this, how we can help each other. You know, the land jurisdiction can also help the commercial jurisdiction. We're not opposed to each other. And somehow people in the town somehow think that this land jurisdiction is against them or some sort of group that's trying to, we're, all we're trying to do is balance out what we have so that we can get things done. That's all. And uh, again, I just thought I'd appeal to the board. If you need my phone number, you can call the police chief. He has it. Anyway, thank you very much. How was that, Kat? Can I speak? Right on the show. Michelle um, Lemire, 70 Division Street. Just a sign now. Um, I, I know the chair doesn't like this. I got a text that the audio is really bad uh, with the meeting. And um, people can't hear Mark speak. And Mark, to be honest with you, I'm sitting there and your voice is very low. You know, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, just the season, uh, we're coming up to annual town meeting and citizen petitions. I just wanted to point out that, uh, be proactive. Uh, I wanted to get going on a couple citizen petitions. I had requested from the town clerk's office the form, and I was told I couldn't get the form 
until the citizen petition theory is open. Now, uh, my recollection, and I've done citizen petitions before, is the form was available. And Genesina said, no, it wasn't, but we, we agreed to disagree on that. But many times this board will say, well, this town does this, that city does that, why don't we do it? So I went online and Lincoln Mass posts their citizens petition, they're right online, Lexington Mass, Lancaster Mass, Grafton Mass, and others. So in the sphere of citizen participation, um, I can't see why the citizen petition can't be posted on the website so people can start working on it. They're not turning it in to the citizen petition period opens, but I myself, I work 10 hour days, if not more, to get signatures is difficult, even 10 signatures. So having it early and getting it framed up, you know, it would be helpful. But again, many other towns, you just have to go on and Google the towns and it's, it's right there. It's right there. Uh, my second comment has to do with the railroad project on Van Dusen Hill Road. Uh, nothing is worse than putting in a 10 to 12 hour day, coming home and I have literally burst into tears. Having to come down Van Dusen Hill Road and see that mess. Now, this being said, I've often said Great Barrington's more than Main Street. Well, Housatonic's more than Housatonic Village. It's Van Duzaville, it's Risingdale, it's North Plain Road. And uh, Ms. Davis just expressed uh, concern about the health and safety of the community. There isn't health and safety in Van Duzaville. Anybody, and I know Eric, you went down there because I was behind you Thursday night when truck got stuck at the underpass. So this, this is the R2 area. This shouldn't be happening in this area. And that trucking company, that they're out of Sturbridge. They don't know me from anyone. But we have a short-term bylaw. So your the house next to you doesn't have strangers there all the time. I have a trucking company flying up and down Division Street, dumping from wherever. I don't know where they're dumping, getting it from. I guess I'll just have to follow one of the trucks someday and find out where they're dumping. But they're dumping it in my neighborhood. And a uh, line in my, uh, I did my December 7th email to Representative mm -hmm. Natalie and Senator Mark, as well as here. I haven't gotten a response yet, but I said, if this is how the railroad does business, I shudder to think what will happen if rail is used to transport PCBs. Are you going to throw my neighborhood under a bus? Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Anna Christine Stanton. Just unmute yourself. Hi, Anna Christine Stanton, Division Street, Great Barrington. I have a comment about the PCB removal and transportation. Uh, it's a known fact that the PCBs lying deep in the sediment of the river become a danger to our community when they are thought, brought to the surface during dredging. They can then become volatile and airborne, doesn't matter how they are transported. Transported. This will be a danger and health hazard to us all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Select more time. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to take a last meeting of the year. I guess the meeting of the year from the board. Uh, I know all the board people who are in the past. Just a lot of support experience for me. Just hope to do it next year and to do more good. Thanks. Yeah, I'm not finished. I'm not going to let Media time. Unanimous consent. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.